Roberts and David's Forestville, under God, we've had the wonderful, rich privilege of seeing women, men, girls and boys come to know, trust and follow Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. Now, our desire is to build on this wonderful platform that has been laid by faithful men and women of the past. And under God, we want to reinvigorate our own love for Jesus and also our desire to see others around us come to know, trust and follow our Lord Jesus as their Saviour too. Now, after prayerful consideration, the discussion with the ministry staff team and our parish council, we are seeking to refocus our vision as a church. Our prayer is that we might see God glorified as thousands are being transformed by Jesus in the forest and beyond. Now, let me spend a moment to unpack what I mean by that. Firstly, first and foremost, our prayer is that we might see God glorified in all that we do. That is about God's glory not ours. Let me read from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in Him with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of His glory. See, it's wonderful, isn't it? When you not only hear the good news of Jesus, but when you believe in it, you are given the Holy Spirit, guaranteeing you eternal life with the Father, Son and Spirit for eternity. Wonderful news. And all of this is why, end of verse 14, for the praise of God's glory. That's all about God's glory, not ours. The second aspect of our vision statement is that we may see thousands being transformed by Jesus. See, the Christian life is not meant to be a stale, static life. But we have the joy and privilege of being transformed day by day, more and more in the likeness of Jesus. 2 Corinthians 3 speaks about this. Verse 18. For we all who with, unva who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into His image with an ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Isn't it amazing that we get to reflect the glory of the Lord Jesus and we are being transformed from glory to glory to glory day by day as the Spirit works in our lives as followers of Jesus. And our prayer is this will be happening not only in our lives and in the lives of those in our church, but those outside us who don't yet know Jesus. That they would also be transformed from glory to glory as they turn and repent, responding to the good news of Jesus. Because there are 13,000 people in the forest alone, many who don't know this good news that Jesus saves. Which gets us to our final part of our vision statement, in the forest and beyond. Let me read from Romans chapter 10. Romans 10 verse 13 says this, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they've not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they've been sent? As it, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. See, verse 13 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. That is awesome. But for them to call, they need to hear, they need to believe, they need to be preached, they need to be sent, which could be any of us and all of us as we're sent out to the world around us, our workplace, schools, sporting events, hobbies, all those places we can be sent out. Because this good news is not just for the forest, but it's beyond the Northern Beaches, Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, the world. For all people need to hear the good news of Jesus, the one who saves. So will you join us in this endeavor? to see God glorified as thousands are being transformed by Jesus in the forest and beyond. Now, over the next five weeks, we're going to be spending some time thinking about what this might look like for us both individually and as a church. See, our prayer is that you, me, we may together want to be maturing as disciples of Jesus that God's Spirit is transforming us more and more into the likeness of His Son, and that for His glory, we are wanting to grow in every aspect of our Christian lives. Now, there are many ways to express this, 
And the way that we want to try and express this is to be thinking of it in terms of five characteristics of a mature Christian who's a follower of Jesus. Our prayer that is that as disciples of Jesus, we might be maturing in one, deeply trusting in God's word, being on mission to see others saved, loving God with thanksgiving, prayer and praise, belonging in community with God's family and serving others gladly and fruitfully. Now, each of these five characteristics are important in our lives and maturing as disciples of Jesus is something that all five aspects should be firing. See, when one part suffers, then all parts suffer. And so together they are intertwined in our Christian life and in our church life. Now, over the next five weeks, we'll be unpacking what each of these five characteristics or aspects of our Christian mature life looks like and what it looks like for us as a church who are on about these five characteristics. But this week, we're going to focus on deeply trusting in the Word. For the Word of God is the foundation and the engine room for the Christian life and for transformation. We want to be mature Christians, mature disciples of Jesus who are living deeply in trusting God's Word, knowing it, being soaked into it, trusting in it and building our lives on it. Now, there are so many different ways that we can be deepening our tr trust in God's Word. Individually, that we're spending time prayerfully reading God's Word for ourselves. As we catch up with others, one-on-one -on -one, or in groups of two or three, that we are encouraging each other as we open up God's Word. That we are trusting God's Word as we gather together in our Bible studies. And that it's not just about me trusting deeply in God's Word, but helping others and spurring others in our Bible studies to trust God's Word deeper. Also, when we gather together on Sundays, as we hear the Word, that we are again having opportunities to realign our hearts to trust God's Word and not the world. And as we serve together on our ministry teams, reminding each other we're serving God first and foremost, and that it's for His glory that we are able to serve Him and others. See, deeply trusting in God's Word is not just a me thing. It's something that we can mature together in and help others mature in. We need to be growing in deeply trusting God's Word as these things will impact all the other aspects of our Christian life. For we want to be nurturing, maturing and transforming as disciples of Jesus found in God's Word, not ourselves. Here's how some of us have been maturing in our deep trust of God's Word this year. Um, I've just been really encouraged, like reading the Bible, praying, getting into God's Word, especially because I'm a year 12 student. It's been a, like, a stressful time of my life thinking about like, what's going to happen in the HSC? What am I going to do next year? Like, you know, what's going to be happening? And I've just been really encouraged from reading God's Word that like, yeah, God is like the creator of the world. He has it all under control and like, it's just taken away so much stress and anxiety for me this year, which I've been yeah, really grateful for. I enjoyed Hosea, even though my group didn't, um, because it just proves that people are people and they can only change if they have God with them. And I felt God asked Hosea to do a lot of impossible things, but he did them. Uh, sometimes in my life, I think he's ask me to do things I don't want to do, and you think they're impossible, but they turn out to be what he wanted. I've been encouraged uh, looking at Hosea uh, and the overview of Judges. It's always good to get into the Old Testament and see how God's purpose and plan has been constant and consistent. Um, and to remember that he's sovereign in all things. When you see how the Israelites have acted throughout history, how all, that, all the people that God has ever called and chosen have acted towards him throughout history, you realize how great his love is um, and just how desperately we need him. I think I've been really challenged to think about how like God and his word, like it matters so much and it matters to all parts of our life. 
and like just like in the relationships you have, the people you talk to, how you treat your family, your sibling, your friends, like how being a Christian matters and how being in God's word and thinking about, yeah, how to be loving and kind and thoughtful and how to live servant heartedly. And yeah, spending time in God's word, how that really shapes just like all parts of your life. I always trust God. I always think God knows better than I do. Um, and he does. I have to trust God when I'm giving the Bible study that the people will hear it and feel it. Uh, personally, I've been reading through uh, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and those books have really made me strongly think about God's purity and his holiness and just how easily I forget that in my own life. Now, as Christians, we know that Jesus is the one that makes us pure. There's nothing we can do for that. But it doesn't dismiss us from treating God as holy and pure. And it puts another level of importance behind living holy and pure lives for him. I've really been encouraged by Bible study this year. Um, it's just been such a really encouraging time for me to be with other people who are keen to get into God's Word. And I also just think it's really interesting, like something that I would think of when I read the Bible, like someone else will look at it in a different way or have a more re like relevant application. And then just having someone running you through it as well, just like different things about context that I wouldn't, yeah, wouldn't have thought of, but have really helped challenge me um, in my own personal time. I've been someone who I find it hard to get in a good Bible reading routine, but I've found like being really intentional, um, getting, having the Bible app on my phone has been really good. I've just found moments where I've been like at the beach and I'm like, I'm just going to read my Bible and that's just been really helpful. And I'm enjoying the fact that they're actually questioning things. Some of them have not been Christians very long and they're very uh, unsure of what the Bible's really telling them. So we we now have discussions on it, but they're not frightened to say something that, and we'll all think they're silly. We just chat about it and encourage them. And that encourages me. I really go home feeling it's been worthwhile. Bible study is fantastic because it, it lives out the picture of the church as a body with different parts and different specialties all working together to make a functioning whole. It's a chance for, for everyone to be encouraged by whatever insight God gives us, and various gifts and experiences and wisdom He gives us. And I think also equally importantly, it's a chance to be corrected, um, to step back from your own interpretation of the Bible and hear what the rest of God's people say about it. It's a chance to course correct, I guess, um, and to humble myself before the teaching and experience of others. We praise God for the way that he has been working in people's lives to grow deeply in trusting God's word. Now, over the coming weeks, we'll be thinking more about how each of us can play our part, both individually and as a church. But for now, my prayer is that you will want to join us as a church as we seek to see God glorified as thousands are being transformed by Jesus in the forest and beyond.